Hello and welcome to the second Collaborate Live from the City of Glasgow College from the Scotland l and Connecting Conference. Uh, this is totally different to what you saw if you watched earlier in the day, because now we've got a group of people. Um, and we're going to attempt to um, have a conversation about a topic that's been chosen by our convener, Martin. Um, and Martin is going to pose the topic for us and we're going to discuss it and invite your contributions through the live tribe hashtag over Twitter. Um, and I guess without further ado, we should crack on. So, Martin, yeah. over to you. So, so yeah, this in the topic I wrote a piece of paper here, so I wouldn't be here. Inside and out, how do we shake up power dynamics and release creativity in organizations? It was an attempt to uh, distill a little conversation that we had in three minutes uh, between four of us. Uh, my interest critically being in releasing creativity. Uh, we talked about power dynamics and employee ownership and engagement. And, uh, basically, how do, how, how do we release people from the grip of it's called fear, internal self constraint, um, from ways of being that aren't necessarily theirs uh, in the systems that they're working on? And I'm interested in that as a, as a practitioner and uh, doing large scale change in organizations. But so I think also just as a view, you know, every day I'm new to people and I almost can feel a barrier of fear to connecting in a, in a way that isn't to you know, all the permission to talk or you know, can you talk about this here? Uh, uh, is it okay? Um, I don't know where we are. I was just sitting because I was kind of knackered. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Simon threw a campfire because we were talking about sitting by campfires in that meditative space. And uh, it just kind of grew into a conversation between actually 10 of us about that quality of being together, that quality of being with other people, and uh, what we gained from that, and how. Digital relating is, is a challenge to that, but also an opportunity to do that in this sort of way, in a, in a completely different way, where we can meet people and chat. Uh, so there, there are all sorts of questions that I have, but I'm personally interested in, well, can we just talk about that between us? Can we shape the space for the time that we're here, be together and meditate, I guess, together, listening to each other uh, on those sorts of topics? And I'll just give you an idea. I captured some words from the conversation earlier. Uh, okay. Um, the the sounds not great. We may need to just end the other one after. Yeah. Uh, so we, I, I captured some words from the conversation earlier about the quality of the space that we were creating together, and that quality being agenda free. Allowing boredom to exist, uh, creating rules as we go along, there being a warmth to it, uh, being being okay, in feeling safe, uh, letting other people be, <coughs> creating and daring together, uh, experimenting and dialogue. And then there are two words that kind of came up as blocks to that, uh, which are fear and failure. Um, that is things that we need to engage with, allow failure and allow fear to exist to be able to get to that space. So that's not the second thought of the day, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we could. Um, so, what do we get? Just a thought around. I was thinking <clears throat> that um, supposing you don't have to release fear. Supposing creativity is a constant. So people have experience, but the moment they represent that experience, so the moment even they tell somebody else about their experience in a conversation or whatever, they choose not to tell the experience, but they choose to curate that experience for that person in that conversation at that moment in time. So that process of saying something about your experience is process whereby you include some things and you leave other things out. And that is a 
creative response to your experience. So I think there's something about my understanding of the release of creativity that in a way makes it perhaps more special than it is. It might be different if we were to think of it as <clears throat> inherently universal. It's constantly there. But we, we can't not we can't it. Yeah. yeah. I wonder. Mm -hmm. Can you no, yes. recently just taken the leap of faith and started up on their own and there was a great fear of, of actually just doing it and uh, speaking to my wife she came up with this little quotation around um, if I can get it right what lies uh, behind you and what lies before you is not nearly as important as to what lies within you mm -hmm. and there's a piece around personal belief and personal understanding and courage comes in there, I think, as well. Facing up to that fear and just doing it anyway, I think that's the name of a fairly popular book. <laughs> uh, but facing the fear and doing it takes any antithesis of fear, and that's courage. And all of us have got a bit of a lesson to learn courage and, and believing that we've actually got more within us than what's behind us and what's before us, but actually believe in ourselves. So something about that is important for me. We're putting that together with the, the notion that we're all, we all carry fundamentally an essence of something that's, that's on great that it is greater and creates. Yeah. Uh, there's something about actually just allowing ourselves to be that. There's a. I, I think that in terms of fear, there's, I think there's a fear that we have to be creative, but there's also a fear. The talk of letting people be creative <coughs> and like not, like not having control and just. Um, I've been speaking to Martin. I work with companies that are moving into employee ownership, and the business owners are always like, you know, they'll succeed in the control group, you know, but yeah, <laughs> they always are. But it's just, it's actually gradually letting go of that control and actually letting people, you know, step up and take responsibility and, and, and you know, make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's fear coming both ways. Mm -hmm. And I guess that moves back to that courage point, doesn't it? It's a courage from within the individual, but courage from the organisation. Yes. Over the business or over the business to trust. Let go. Be courageous. Yeah. Let go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, fear of loss and control can be very big hand for everybody else. Yes. And they end up holding that fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I worked for a company once where it was a software company, and day to day people had well defined rules and they knew they had. Do and there was, was targets and things like that. And we wanted to stretch the product offering and just stretch the thinking about what the company could offer. So we, the company set up this idea of labs. So we would take people to walk away for 24 hours and they could do what they wanted. So we, we, we had maybe five or six starting ideas. And, the, and it wasn't like if they achieved nothing, it was a big deal. It wasn't a big deal if they achieved nothing. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a big deal if something came out of it. Something or not, it's the way that we took part in it and we were able to contribute with 
I guess, more pressure on what, what the contribution was. The way you were talking reminded me of, um, of a book title I came up with. I've got various chapters kind of <laughs> printed <laughs> around various devices called Permission to Be. Because like, you're talking about a space that we've been created yeah, yeah. where actually the only thing that you need to do is to be, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. be as curious as you are, be as inventive as innovative as you want. I'm interested in how can you how can you actually take that from a space that needs to be created to can you can you create organizations in which there is permission to be brought into the DNA, brought into the structures, brought into the way we just be how you take that is a very special, precious thing, that's good. Yeah. But then you have to value in emergent exploration. And that's difficult if you're accountable for consistent delivery and the management of risk. Mm. So those two may seem simultaneously conflicting until, of course, you then give yourself permission by Changing the word to innovation, so suddenly it is about giving yourself as well as finding a culture that is conducive. Well, it's interesting that you've been paradigm extends. You know, I see that any paradigm. You're answering to me. <laughs> we're playing, we're, we're happy to, uh, to be a part of your, we're choosing to be a part of your Because yeah. you're free to Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Two set of strings. Two set of strings. Yeah, you're, you're a person constrained in this, aren't you? Because yeah, you've got limits and uh, yeah. the expectations applied to the worst. Whereas for us, there's no limits and no expectations necessarily. And we set the spaces up so, so yeah, we, we can. We can be in those spaces. So maybe that feels really different for you to how it goes for us. And it's really interesting because I wonder if it's nice if you were interested, which you are obviously, if the conversation would change and be different. You talk about it. Yeah. I suppose. I don't think you feel as responsibilities in terms of those questions to kind of come up with some answers and get yeah. help for yeah. things. But yeah. if you were to go, it might move in a different way. Because then maybe I, I'm just talking personally. They're less responsible to you because you're not here anymore, and they're all just responsible to the topic or just talking about. There you go. There you go. There's a question that's come over Twitter. This will change continuum. Um, and he's asking what the motivation is for shaking up this power in terms of unleashing creativity. Back to you, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> My motivation. Or well, Annie, you know, what's the motivation? Why would you want to take away the freedom? Oh. I don't, I don't mind being free. I'd seem like a bit of a fire, but I knew you were. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked previously in organizations where fear was a controlling factor of the leadership dynamic of the organization. Mm -hmm. and it was an awful place to be. Um, it was demotivating, it was, it, was a, it was a real inhibiting factor on the staff, and I felt that morale was pretty low. Yeah. And so one of the reasons I left was that I could no longer work for an organization that was serving employees by using fear. I think Brad, you're talking about moments of being motivated by things that would make me like a deadline in most cases. It was something that's probably not the best at planning out and meeting a deadline in advance, but actually sprinting up to meet that deadline is pretty exciting. So that's what I was going to be about. It's on that continuum, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you took this into I understand you're talking about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just think it's the other way around. That creative people, I think, shine. Um, so they transcend power dynamics. 
there's something about that enthusiasm, you know, that the little mean enthusiasm, the little quote of the thing, is very bright, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it therefore changes power dynamics. And I mean, to the extent that creativity doesn't just connect in terms of your practice, but your thought, your feelings, and that sort of somatic resonance mm -hmm. with doing something new, mm -hmm. which of course makes you very vulnerable at the same time. It's incredible. I'm threatening to right. and, 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 and might then provoke a response to yeah. dampen that fire down. And... Particularly if it's not what you were meant to be doing. Yeah. Or what somebody else did. Yeah. Well, also, creative needs to be used and renewed as well. Who do you do something the same or something about it in a new way? You know, one of the examples I think of is that uh, I write lots of proposals, and sometimes I write lots of proposals for the same thing. But in a different way, and I started that with a dream of mine going, right, I'm not going to copy and paste what I know exists already, but let's go and get a bag of that paper out and start to work on this proposal that's essentially the same as one I did last week, but actually I want to put some, I don't know, creativity into it. You know, it's an art form, right, a proposal to put some passion into it, so it's right, not just copy and paste the last one. Yeah. We've got another question from Twitter. So if we shake up these, Do autonomy on your own. <laughs> <laughs> there is only autonomy within a social construct against which you can be autonomous. If you're on your own, it's kind of axiomatic that you are autonomous. So there's something about the two of them kind of go together, I think. You have to do autonomy within some group of people. I think it's that inviting to, 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 to time, people are reluctant to do yeah. that. Maybe that okay as well. And, and then to so just come to these big brief questions. My response in the silence, my internal response in the silence was, oh, that feels good to be part of this. So I was experiencing this kind of, oh, this feels special. Do you know, I don't get to do this every day. Mm -hmm. There's a word that's going through my mind, thinking of the bridges, and that's the word stewardship. And that's a, I love that word. And it's a, it's a sort of play on accountability, and it could be the bridge from um, autonomy to accountability. It maybe needs some further clarification, but stewardship is something that strikes in my mind a bit like servant type of leadership as well. Mm -hmm. So coming into that, maybe that's a thought. And, and with that, in terms of employee ownership, that's something that we're very much looking to encourage. It's the idea that you know, we're all in this together, we're mm -hmm. all thinking about the bigger picture. Um, and, and actually, a lot of for example, John Lewis shares are held in trust. It's very much the idea of stewardship. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we we'll that. Is this all helping you, Mark, and Brian? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask the question to be helped. Oh. <laughs> I asked the question because it's the question that, that my life is about. Now I might try to carry that and offer it to see it and help other people to wrestle with it. But, you know, there's, there's a, a comment here, trying to continue this. Uh, <laughs> As there's no time, I think, you know, what are we doing? I want to put up shining. If we don't have that kind of the spark for and that sense of kind of, oh, I'm alive and it's good to be alive, even when it really hurts, and you know, even when it's really hard, even when it's really tough going, and it's good to be alive with other people. And somehow I feel more alive than the people around me are more alive. 
Anyway, but that, I was at a funeral on Monday, yeah. and the place, the guy that died was a, a guy who was 40 years old, or probably on a motorbike accident. But the kids' room was packed. And there was biker gangs there, there was uh, special police people there, they were playing Pink Floyd and Food oh, Fighters. Yeah. And there was people outside the place, it was tremendous, but it was a funeral. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just what you're saying, it's about being with people, and that's all it was, you know. <laughs> I've got a question that I want to ask, which is, it is when I think about the question that was originally posed by Martin, for me it implies that power is a bad thing if we're trying to elicit creativity from people. And I'm just always the okay, case, I can sometimes be a liberator, it can entice that, that creativity out of people. So I'm curious whether there are situations where power has really worked. In so in, in my original question, I was thinking of power over, okay. not power with or power in relation. It's someone having power over someone else. And I'm going to check the problem with that is power over that is abused. Yeah, to so control and yeah. oppression. How are the trends? How are the deflates? It doesn't really slide with the cycle. The very particular things are very, very good. Cool. Particular anymore. But is it power neutral as a concept? And the use of power is, is the thing we want to empower. Mm -hmm. I had a very negative view of it from the question as well. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought of, thought of it as an impediment to getting things done collectively. Well, actually, it can be used very positively it's by giving permission, mm -hmm. by sharing the power. The power, the power itself mm -hmm. is just a neutral yeah. entity. Mm -hmm. well, whose power is that anyway? Mm -hmm. you know, who, who, whose energy is powering my body right now? I don't know. There was bacteria here and you know, a bunch mm -hmm. of cells and it's this sparky thing that is what I know that. It's borrowed, I don't know if you have a Sunday. I have a thing, I've been hanging back here just doing Twitter things. And then, <laughs> um, um, these conversations are, are good. And they're useful to think about. Because for me, we can sit in rooms like this and we can have these conversations and they're good and they're deep and they're connected. And then you leave the room and you go into an organisational context where people are not having conversations like this and you just look a little bit strange or you just look like you're in your head. And I, I think there's a real, it, these conversations need to happen and at the point they're having things like on, on conferences or so these things can happen. So I'm always interested in how do we role model it. How do we get it out? How do we connect this stuff differently, better, so that we're influencing? Um, mm. And I'm now going back on Twitter, but I just want, I, I really want to put yeah. that in the mix because I think the risk is we get mm. dreamy. And dreamy is good, mm. but dreamy connected, I think, is, is better. Yeah. I, I, I think we do it by, um, by the influence we have with the client. So if the client's called us in, They've called us in for a purpose. And um, in many cases, they've called us in because we are able to say things that can't be said in the environment. That's why external consultancy is useful. So I, I, I would be asking the question of the client, how do you use the power that you have? What are you doing with it? Are you letting it lie so that people interpret it in, in the way that they might, that you're lording it over them or depriving them of responsibility or indeed making them feel comfortable because they don't have to take decisions and they don't have to engage. They simply do what they think they're being told to do. Or are you using your power creatively? Are you sharing it? Are you distributing it? Um, and are you using it for creativity? So, and I think we have the right to ask that question of the client um, without losing the contract, without losing the client. I think it's our responsibility to ask those questions of the client. If they give us unpleasant replies, then we learn something. It's a bit of data about the client. Mm -hmm. And what I meant about that is it's quite often when you're working with and people who, particularly people who are working with animal development, they will say we don't have power 
Wir haben anders sagen, als die Diskussion und so. Und das ist eine Präsentation und eine Präsentation. Das ist ein Ding, das man sieht, wo a lot of people don't believe people of power, or they say, well, power sits in board. And I'm not always convinced that that's the case. There's definitely power that sits in the board, but you can be positive and disruptive, and you can poke around at the edges and use them. I mean, I can't have to do that, otherwise I'm going to jump. Yeah, I just have to have a lot of doing that for a level. But yeah. Yeah, I love I love the power dynamics in that level in organizations. Yeah. Why, you know, I just love it. And I think that's part of daring being creative and daring and courageous and saying things that might not be said internally, but you know, having the guts and the you know, doing the right thing and saying the right thing and seeing what that is. I think that the responsibility you have an external, you see something to say it rather than to control it. So, that's mm -hmm. yeah, a bit of daring. Yeah. Well, the, the, the metaphor I was thinking of was having walked in the earth, I had to take Simon's fire with me. <laughs> I didn't like that. I really didn't like it. Yeah. And then I had that time to draw another one. Uh, but actually, if it were a real fire, I'd just take a stick. And I'd use it to light my own fire, mm -hmm. and then anyone else could take a stick in my own fire. That's the other metaphor. Mm -hmm. So, can you carry, carry a hold of your own mm -hmm. uh, connection to that energy? Whatever it is. And then, after that, anybody could do it. I also think that power takes two. It is kind of relative um, quality. So, those who have power might be corporately accountable over factors over which they have got absolutely no hands on ability to make any difference to whatsoever. So who has the power? Is it the person who is closest to being able to actually do it and make a difference? Or those who are corporately accountable for stuff over which they have no responsibility? So in a way, there is power, I think, in, in sensing the power difference depending on the context and the situation. And you may put yourself in a power relationship that is entirely of your own mm. making. I mean, it may be reinforced by an organogram, ranked yeah. badges, and all sorts of things. Well, you know, step by hand, you know, back, you know, someone else takes that. It doesn't have the choice to you know, but how. How much you take a step forward, much you take a step forward. Do you want to Yeah, I'm kind of going back to Julie's point about how we take things back and reverse so what we want to is it, is it not a case of letting people experience it that, that you, you have to it, they, until they experience it they don't, they don't under, they don't, um, you know really know the kind of power of, of doing this and the more people experience it then they then want to go and do it so should we just kind of you know growing the network of people that are doing things like this i think i'm drawn to that, that notion of inviting people Towards something different. I, I really like that. I think some lovely about saying to people, just step step towards yeah, like a little bit, but like just, just go a little bit, just like a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. I mean, you know, you need to take someone on a bike and say to them for the first time, go right on you, but you need to stabilize it on to start with. And I think that's, you know, if your if your if your life is bound up in your job title. The money that comes in, the mortgage, the, the reality that's around this stuff, suddenly kind of giving it up and just going, yeah, it's all right, like everybody in my team can think for themselves, yeah, yeah, it's going to take a bit of work, I, you know, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm good with that, a lot of people. I, I think, I, I'm not, I don't have a huge amount of patience with it, because now if I was really good with it, I'd be like, yes, okay. I, I don't think it's necessarily the okay, but I understand it, and I can work from there. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I'm not good. I'm glad you said stabilizer sometimes because, I, I, because as it happens, 
they've now discovered after a hundred years that stabilizers and bikes are not the way to run. <laughs> 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 Because actually, actually what they do now with children's bikes is they take the pedals off yeah. and you learn balance first and you learn proportion second. And actually it's a really good metaphor for the way that we work because sometimes rather than adding a process, we should be taking something away wow. and saying, okay, let's not worry about the strategy, let's not worry about the corporate plan, let's just look at power. Let's see if you can balance the power in this conversation without reference to the context. We'll do that later. And so, because we had a conversation this morning about what about stripping things back and taking things away in order to have an impact on the client, and maybe that's uh, thank you for the stabilizers because it reminded me of that. Yeah, that's been excellent. I had a reaction to the machine seeing my pedals. It's like, no, don't take my pedals. <laughs> 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 don't even need a chain. <laughs> I guess my, you know, my question for myself um, is how can I uh, build the best product as a kind of bonus more, 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 uh, more, more reading? I have the idea of taking a stick from fire. That's the point. It would be really good if you just started to do it already, to bring the conversation to a close by thinking about what are you taking away from the room having been here and in this conversation? What are you leaving with that you didn't have before? Nothing. Uh, and that's probably the biggest lesson for me. Okay. So it's back, back to that. It's about revealing what you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Letting uh, the clouds come up and see what they really are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would say the opposite. Everything, <laughs> everything that has been said here, which oh, was not, a... <laughs> which was not said in this way previously before. <laughs> so that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's only a point where I hope you can tell me. Anything else that anyone's taking away from the room? I'm, I'm giving up my pedals. Um, that, that's yeah. that's yeah. struck me. The thing that sort of stabilizes mm. is pedals. I, I don't really know what that is yet, but there's, there's a thing in there for sure. It's a brilliant metaphor, and it does challenge, doesn't doesn't it? Some maybe lazy thinking that we might fall into. That's what brilliant metaphor, though. Yeah. Because I'm going to move into screen like a meerkat <laughs> and say. So this has been uh, the second um, Collaborate Live that we've done from um, the um, LD Connecting Conference up in Scotland at the City of Glasgow College. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much for contributing on Twitter. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the conversation and we'll be back soon with, a, with another instalment. Uh, but thank you to all our guests. Uh, we've never done it this way before. Um, so it's been been quite an experiment and quite an experience. Uh, but, uh, I, think, I think a round of applause is appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that's where we'll end the podcast.